All right, this is actually promising to be an interesting tool. He attacked our Dark Be Beckoning Beast. Okay, and yeah, now we have uh, this in the graveyard. He has, he's playing Gizmek Makami. He's playing a Gizmek deck because <laughs> if, a, if a card is banished, uh, gain 500 life points for each. And we have Dimensional Fisher, and we work with the Banished Zone as well, so. Um, all right, let's see. Let's activate. <coughs> Okay, so we add to the hand. I think it's smart to add you. Um, but regardless, let's do this first actually. Um, discard. Discard you. To special summon. Okay, he's. What? He has Maxi, perhaps another one? He already has had Maxi and Edge Blossom. Um, so. um, that's special summon you in defense. That's Banish. <coughs> Alright. He gets to the hand. I think Raphael will be the best play right now. Okay, card is banished, he gains 500 life points. That's pretty cool. We tribute. And we special summon Rabiel, Lord of Phantasms. If we may. Ding. <coughs> dun dun dun. All right, he read the effect. He knows this is coming now. Here's what he has here, like, if he has something, then he's going to use it now. That's fine. If he does. Okay. Maybe he has Gizme Karochi in his hand. And that's what's triggering all the time. I don't think so, because it's likely that his face down card is something at least. Um, but let's see. Alright, so we add to the hand Fallen Paradise. We activate Fallen Paradise. Oh yeah, he gains life points. <clears throat> yeah, if you want to insta kill him this round, or OTK, I guess, one turn kill him this round, then we'll have to make sure to not banish that many cards, but I believe we'll be fine. Even if we don't kill him this turn, then we'll be fine. Okay, let's see what we draw. He is checking what, we, what card we have still. Hmm. Okay, and maybe he's not familiar with the Sacred Beast deck, so we'll have to read quite a few effects in order to understand what's going on. Let's see, we draw... Oh man, that's not that good. Unfortunate. Um, yeah, then I don't think we'll... Yeah, no, we will not be able to insta-kill him. Will we though? Yeah, no, there's... We can normal summon this, but it really won't help us, unfortunately. Um, let's do it regardless, normal summon. And let's see what we can add to the hand, what will help us out a lot. I think Cerulean Skyfire is our best bet, but let's see. <coughs> is it? Yeah, I think it is. Um, so yeah, let's just try to make a, a strong board, I guess. Um, which will consist of... Let's first attack his monster, I guess. We don't really have to activate uh, Raviel here. It, basically, we can later attribute Dark Beckoning Beast with um, Phantasm's his effect. Okay, so he allows us to go to the battle phase. Let's see if he has anything. Um, no, his monster's got, it's gonna die, okay, sure. Um, okay, that's fine. Okay, he has something. And just for the swag, we'll attack for this, just because it's fun. Let's see. Okay, no, it's prolonging the game. 
Oh man, it's funny. I, I like to do it, I don't know why. Mephis 2, let's actually use DDR. <coughs> um, we discard. Ooh, we could also discard you. We could just get it back to the hand. Right? But then we'd have no way to get this. Ah, okay, let's discard this. Um, we special summon this card. <coughs> Alright, we special summon it in attack. We get to the field. Okay, he can respond to everything, so this is gonna take a while if he has to read our cars every time. Um, let's use this and get to the field. Come on. Lord of Striking Thunder. <laughs> awesome, okay. Um, perfect. Let's get this on the field ASAP, so that we can negate his spell trap, if he chooses to do so, to activate it. Um, okay, let's get this back to the hand. Attributing you. Alright, um, and we can also start to gain life points, e either doing this by, um, yeah, using this effect, Awakening of Sacred Beast. We have, oh, we didn't use that this turn yet, so let's do it. He gets life points again, so be it. Um, nope, we don't chain, we add to the hand. Come on, why not? Um, yeah, so we, <laughs> I don't think he will, he will benefit a lot from, uh, or, I played Serena Skyfire, nope. Uh, he will not um, suffer a lot from Dimensional Fissure. So I think we'll just uh, activate Awakening of Sacred Beast and see what that will bring us. <coughs> and with that... Hmm. I'm just thinking, by the way, like we can get this monster on the field because we can Special Summon. Uh, we can discard Dimensional Fissure and then add it right back to the hand again. Um, I'm just not sure if we want to do that. Ah, it's cool like this. And this. Like, uh, we, we would just be able to get this monster on the field. I don't know, it, it won't do much good for us. Normally it would, like if you were, first of all, playing ex outside of the extra zero of this one, and uh, also um, not in our Team 2 Yu-Gi-Oh! format. So in the modern meta, you can have like a splashable card here, of course. <coughs> <coughs> Which would allow any monster to be good material. Okay, so what is he gonna... This card is no more special summon, you can discard one monster, uh, uh, but we're not gonna let you do that. So, that's fine with me, but we're gonna wait till we discard some monster. Nope, don't, don't negate it. Okay, this effect's gonna activate his cost, is, he's gonna pay his cost, you can discard one monster. <coughs> Maybe we should have used Dimensional Fisher, I'm not sure. Okay, sure, discard your monster. Fairytale Snow, oof. Discard in your graveyard, you can banish seven other cards from your hand, field, and or graveyard, special summon this card. Hmm, okay, well, if anything. Okay, so we definitely should have done Dimensional Fisher. Oh, and I should have activated Awakening of the Sacred Beast, come on. Oh man, I'm getting sleepy, I noticed, because <laughs> what I could have done, I should just only activate sacred, uh, this basically. That's the only thing we should have activated. Doesn't matter that much, I have to say, but still. Okay, yeah, he does activate it. Okay, so he's gonna special summon the card. And no worry, you can target one face of monster your opponent controls. Change to face that defense position, but he cannot target our sacred beasts because of Fallen Paradise. So he can change this to face down defense position. That's fine with us. <coughs> oh, but also wait, the effect on the field won't resolve. Um, so let's activate this so that we get some life points. Should have done this sooner. I always forget to do that. Like, I think I should make it a habit to actually flip this guy, this card face up as soon as possible. Because I always forget it, because it actually gives you life points if your opponent's normal special summons. Which he's eventually gonna do, right? Otherwise it would be difficult for him to win. 
Okay, sure. You're, it's not gonna resolve. Not because of skill drain, and also not because of Awakening Beast, and also you can only target you. So, yeah. Sorry, ding. It's a beautiful setup. <coughs> Green, red, or purple? Red? What? Anyway, spell, trap, spell, trap, spell. That is awesome. Must first by sending two other monsters from your hand or field of your against three attack for each banished card. Once per turn, you can pay half your life points by one of these effects. Number of Pandora monsters. I was just about to say, like his effect won't resolve. So, all right, that's another win. <laughs> Let's uh, add it to the bucket. It's not the best one, but um, yeah, I don't see. Uh, we don't really lose that much here. Oh, we are close to the Master Art of Palladium Oracle Mahat, and let's play another duel. We're ten minutes in only, so X Zero Festival. Ooh, he has the hero uh, pet. That's amazing. All right, let's see. We're probably gonna go second. If yeah, he wants to start. All right, let's see what deck he's playing. It would be cool if he was playing the um, hero deck. Wow, this thing is huge. Yeah, and it has an amazing. Oh, nice. It has multiple stances as well. Awesome. Okay, face down cards. A tree face down cards. He plays Phantasm Spirals. Oh god. If he has Metaverse in here, then... Then this will be really interesting, actually. <clears throat> Alright. So, let's start. Normal summon. He might have Fist of the Unrivaled Tengi. He might have... Oh man. I'm super familiar with the... With the deck. Because I actually really like the Phantasm Spiral deck. Okay, let's add to the hand opening up the spirit gates. Let's also activate it and see what he does. Because if he somehow negates this, destroys this, then we still have... Okay, he does not. Um, in that case, we will definitely add you to the hand. Mm. Hmm. Yeah, we will do this. Foolish Burial. Goes in match. Each player can only control one attribute of monster. Send all other face up monsters they control to the graveyard. Oh! That's actually a pretty well played card by him. Okay. Um, yeah, I was planning to send this to the graveyard. Hmm. Ooh, that's a pity. We cannot get Fallen Paradise on the field, I think. Simply because of Goes a Match. But um, yeah, that's at least destroy his monster. in the graveyard we can okay so now if I'm not mistaken we can do this discard um, special summon you and get Hamon on the field no we cannot oh no I hate this oh man just because we have dark on the field right now we cannot activate this effect to special summon a non-dark monster even though we will remove this monster from the field. While we... Basically in order to summon this monster. Um, but it's still not possible. Oh man, that's such a pity. That is such a pity. Um, uh, yeah, I guess this is... Oh, okay. This is actually... I just realized. What? Okay. No. He gave up? What? We were actually in a really bad position. We could actually add, add to the Raviel to the hand and we could special summon him. Then get Fallen Paradise on the field and... We would be in a decent position, I guess, still. But, um, alright, that's a win. That was a really interesting, I guess, lockdown deck? Goes a match? Uh, I don't know, it wasn't super lockdown. Maybe it was just a Phantasm Spiral and he drew the wrong cards. Also, I don't really play with, I don't play Goes a match. Um, 
and cards, like uh, similar cards. Like uh, you have three of them, Tikabu, and then the other is, of course, Rivalry of the Warlords. <laughs> oh man, this is some uh, Yu-Gi-Oh trivia. We are going second again. <clears throat> Alright, we actually have a really good hand. We have three starting combo pieces, I guess. Alright, Cloudburst is our opponent. He plays Fateful Adventure. Oh, this is with the Adventure token? Yeah, Adventure token. Okay, once per turn, the first time a monster you control equipped with an equip spell would be destroyed by battle. It is not destroyed. You can only use each of the following effects once per turn. During your main phase, you can add one monster that mentions Adventure token from your deck to your hand and then send one card from your hand to the graveyard. Pretty good. If a monster is normal or special summoned, wow, that's wow, that's um, that's very okay. Wow, that's a good card as well. You can take one equip spell that mentions adventure token from your deck and either add it to your hand or equip it to, add to one adventure token you control. If you control an adventure token, special summon this card from your graveyard. You can manage this card from your hand or graveyard. Add one right from a deck or graveyard to your hand. If you control an adventure token, you can place one field spell that mentions adventure token. From your deck face up in your field zone. Okay, we add right. Control no adventure token special summon one adventure token. <laughs> then if you do not control fateful adventure, you can place one fateful fateful adventure. Oh that's that part. Okay, wow, they help each other. From your deck and face up in your spell and trap zone, you cannot activate effects of monsters on the field this turn. Uh, you activate this turn, except special summon monsters. You can only activate one right, okay, then he activated Draco back. Equip only to uh, to a monster you control, okay, that's that's cool. That's fine. The writable you can only control one. Yeah, okay. You can only use each of the following effects of Draco Back. The writable dragon once per turn. While this card is equipped to a non-effect monster, you can target one card your opponent controls or turn it to the hand. If this card is sent to the graveyard, you can target one adventurer token you control. Equip this card to it. Okay, then we have uh, Eldritch on the on the field and uh, a face down card, which could be well obviously a lot of cards. Hakiero, Hi Hi Conquistador. Let's see what he has. Oh yeah, he has this. If a monster, <coughs> if a monster is normal or special summoned, you can equip one equip spell that matches adventure token from your deck. Yeah, add it to your hand or equip it to one adventure token. He doesn't activate it. Why would you not? Okay, awesome. <laughs> he had a really good hand to block us, but um, luckily we have another search here, so that's nice. Um, let's actually do this. Okay, now we know his now we know his face down card. Uh, we don't want to get this in the graveyard; it will just be annoying there uh, because he can uh, send he can special summon it basically as monster again. We can destroy the adventure token. I feel like oh no 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 wait. First time a monster equipped with it just would be destroyed by battle. It's not destroyed, so it's a token which is protected by battle. Hmm. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, let's uh, make some plays. Let's go, we add this to the hand. Yep. We discard to special summon it. We banish. <coughs> we add to the hand. I guess Hamon, Raviel, doesn't matter. Let's add Hamon. I like Hamon. Okay, then we tribute. Because we can actually get Legacy of the Duelist to the hand. But not after we've done the Fallen Paradise uh, draw. Because we might we might as well draw it and then we may use our Foolish Burial Goods for something else. So activate and draw two cards. Oh, draw two cards. We draw. Okay, that's that's really not bad. Can't complain. Your race map is only for the next turn, but. Sure, I'm good with that. 
Um, all right, legacy to do list. And uh, then we add to the hand. You may guess. Adventure, uh, legacy, sorry, of the duelist. Okay, we activate it. I don't think these tokens do anything on the field. Or maybe the token is more more dangerous on the field than I think. Um, Jet is already banished, so if anything, um, let's do this. Let's go to the battle phase. Let's attack and actually negate our own attack. And destroy this. Okay, equip only to. Yes, while well, the scratch put to non effect monster, you can. Okay, yeah, he's out. Okay, sorry for if I took a little bit long, but I just wanted don't, didn't, didn't want to make mistakes, especially not while recording. Um, we are 20 minutes in, and I think that's where we'll leave it off. We actually unlocked. Hey, perfect, perfect. Uh, rework list. We actually unlocked our. Um, it's called a monster art. Palladium Oracle Mahad, a priest who swore his undying loyalty to an ancient king. His masterful magic can banish any darkness. <laughs> awesome. It's actually pretty... Yeah, it's an okay card in a Team Tugio um, a Dark Magician deck, basically. That's uh, that's actually a pretty decent card, at least a one-off. Um, because you have um, the card which lets you draw cards. Oh man, why I forgot the name. Um, no, I will not come up with it. I don't think so. <laughs> anyway, there's a spell card which lets you draw cards. Um, equal to the number of different named Palladium monsters and or Dark Magician, Dark Magician Girl. Um, you probably all know it and I just uh, can't come up with a word. Um, we will likely play at least until 11,000 and uh, I will continue playing and if I have some fun duels to show then I'll record uh, some and I'll show you guys. I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you in another video. Peace out!